Hello, dear Crawfordians and everyone else watching. I am Marko Miladinović and welcome to a new video. The concept idea of this video is to show you some of my painting techniques as well as to bring some of my thoughts behind them and what drives my creativity. And the topic of today's video will be the city of Mordheim, the actual game that is still have active playing and painting community. At this moment I'm not sure how many videos I'm going to make regarding this topic, but we'll see. For me, the end result is not the main focus, but the whole time I spend on the projects like this. For example, I do enjoy time just thinking about the warbands, about the specific characters and the colors that I will use for them. Conversion also play a big part in games or projects like this, but in this video we're going to focus more on the painting side. In the future videos I'll probably do spend a couple of hours more creating some more unique characters, but for this one we're going to start with something simpler. So think about the time that you're spending on projects like this and think how much joy it brings you. Because for me, even though there is always a lot of new miniatures to paint and exciting projects, I always kind of keep Mordheim and maybe this nostalgia in, in my heart that I always want to go back there and, and just spend my time painting those cool looking minis. I always love to have many options to choose from and to customize miniatures by making specific changes that I imagined. So let's dust off those old plastic sprues and pick the perfect combination for my first swordsman champion of mercenary warband from Glorious Reichland. There are so many bits to choose from, I can spend hours just testing poses and thinking about their backstories. Here is one of my previous builds that I made years ago. Such a grim looking character, a true dog of war. For him I modify one of the tankards from old dwarf kit. I imagine him as an ex-carpenter that joined mercenaries after his whole family got devoured by wild beastmen. Since then he couldn't stop drinking. Here is one eye grim veteran marksman with his trusted blunderbuss. After his campaign in Sylvania he is always wearing garlic around his neck. Here you can see the palette that I have in mind, very warm looking. As for my warband champion, I wanted him to look agile, fast and deadly, and also a little cocky. After time I end up with this combination. Now for the head, I had to look through one of my bits box. I end up choosing this one. I think the nose is the perfect size for the painting and the round head complements the rest of the body. On second thought, I went with a head from one of the Outriders. I think we have a winner. In order to make a cobblestone base, I will use green stuff. For those unfamiliar, green stuff is a two component epoxy based polymer clay that I will mix and afterwards glue to the plastic base. After spreading green stuff evenly, I will carve stone shapes using one of my scalping knives. Mm -hmm. 
Every single detail is there to let imagination loose. Now I will refine stones with pointy silicone brush, making every stone well worn and smooth. With some leftovers I will sculpt rotten apple that will be perfect detail for my base. Nothing tells a grim, dark story as a rotten fruit. When it was dry, I pinned the model to the base to make sure he stood secure. I realized that I still have not named him. Hmm, what about Ludolf? Ludolf Weinbaum. That is a fitting name. Time for painting. I went with zenithal priming using spray. Wait, 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 wait. Don't forget about brush control. First, keep in mind the amount of the paint you load into your brush, as well as dilution of the paint. We often say if the layer is glaze or a thin layer, which is quite similar, but with a bit of different purpose. Glaze is there to overlay uh, your work and settle down the paint and thin layer is there to overleap. Also, thicker layer, thicker opacity doesn't mean the dry paint. There is still water that's needed to be mixed into the paint so it can have better flow for your painting. Next thing is pressure and first of all be sure not to put your whole bristol into a paint. That will ruin your bristol, it will ruin your brush. So you only want to load the brush until half, usually only the tip of the brush and load the paint into the bristle by the half, not to go into the handle. And often rinse your brush into a water, that will remove the exceeded paint and it will make the bristle soft and easy enough to control. Also when you are drying your bristle onto a tissue or removing the exceeded water, you want to pull your brush toward you in a circle rotating movement so the tip stays sharp. We are still at the pressure of the bristol and that means that when you're applying a layer you need to keep the certain uh, pressure of your hand onto the surface of a miniature depending what kind of a stroke, brush stroke, you want to leave. So if you want thicker or wider brush stroke you will have stronger 
pressure and if you want a thinner line or dot or small detailed brush stroke you will do a soft pressure of a bristle. Another thing is a muscle memory. Don't worry if it seems like your hands are not listening to you and you want to achieve certain brush stroke and it just doesn't work. The more you paint the easier it gets. We spend a lot of hours painting and maybe in our hands it looks easy. So be determined, put a lot of work and the results will speak for themselves. And now let's start with painting. In this tutorial I will use just three paints and white. Primary red, Prussian blue, Naples yellow and white. This is a combination that will give a lot of possibilities. To set ambience, cover all materials, including flesh tone and hair. I just love mixing and exploring with paints. Sometimes a limited palette is excellent to learn new ways of color play. In my case, for this theme I will tend to go on warmer scale. So for the darkest shadow I will mix Prussian blue and red but still make sure that there is more red so we end up with very deep red tone. Having all mixes on palette I started with his forehead. I went with Naples yellow and I gradually added red and blue mix in the shades. Then I contrasted them, making gradient. My paint is wet, so I'm able to move and mix pigments directly on the model. This is fun and fast method for underpainting, and it will help me and you in creating ambience in super cool and easy way. I will cover the whole model using similar method, following zenithal highlights as well as the whole ambience and theme. This is the method I perfected with my many years of painting and whenever I use it I feel full control and confidence that even in the first coat of paint I will see the direction that I want to achieve. In every brush stroke you need to put thoughts, direction and movement of paint is the way to communicate and connect, to draw attention and to tell the story of given character, but also of his surroundings as well of his clothes and weapons.
When I paint miniatures, I always like to build my own deeper picture that is sometimes hidden. I don't like to discuss them because I believe everyone should experience it in their own way. It might sound silly, but I treat miniature projects as a way to store memories and emotion that will drive further emotion and build new memories. It is a constant circle with every new work, and I like that. It gives me energy. Talking about movement, my idea when it comes to painting is that I like to make every single brushstroke fresh, making the effect as the paint is still wet to the touch. This way I give life and movement. Here I make a step from painting plastic figure to capturing a moment and emotion. Dynamics with lights and shadows and cold and warm is a base tool in telling the story through painting. Mood is everything, but keep in mind, not everyone will see and experience things your way. Colors that excite you might be repulsive to someone else depending on their life experience. I am a person that is driven by excitement. If there is a mini I like to paint, I can spend insane amounts of hours on it. On the other hand, if something is boring, I just lose interest. Because of it, I like to keep things always interesting and when I feel I am getting bored of one color palette or one style of minis, I will jump on something else. And because of that, I was able to learn many different possibilities on how to achieve different ambience while keeping my own style and way of painting. Mordheim was there from my very own beginnings and by the look of things it always finds a way to jump back on my painting table. Ludolf is shaping up nicely. I quite like the grim and flamboyant feel of him. Always be ready to go back on previous steps. If we can call them like that. For me, a painting is just living phase of shades and light. If some highlights are too strong, or if you feel that you are losing contrast, go back and adjust. It might happen that you make a mess of it, but in the end you will have a piece that you are more proud of as you did everything your own way.
Painting miniatures is not an easy task. It requires frequent dedication. But in the end it gives you enormous satisfaction. First of all, with every new work your skill is improved and second, you end up with glorious collection of epic minis to feast your eyes on or to use in many games. And this will be all for today's videos. Please leave a like, share and comment on what next would you like to see and in what direction should I take this idea further. Until the next one, have amazing time painting and all the best wishes from Alexandra and I.